in this video we will look at how to build a web crawler which can fetch various HTML pages from various websites and then go ahead and parse those HTML pages to get valuable data out of those. So we will be using the Python language in this example and the file webminer.py is available for download in the same page. So what we'll do is we'll try and create a very simple program using which we can demonstrate the basic pieces of a web crawler. So the first thing which we require is actually a library through which we can download various HTML pages. So for that we will use the URL lib2 library. So we go ahead import it and then we also import the sys library. The simple reason is that we want to go ahead and have the user input various uh, HTTP pages. So then we go ahead and uh, call the URL open method of URL lib2 and give it the input the user had given for the web page to fetch and then we go ahead and store the HTML page uh, in an object which is also called HTML page. So this is actually the first part of the program. Let's print the HTML page. So what we've done here is created the first part of a web crawler where we go ahead take the user input for the particular HTML URL and then go ahead fetch that and dump that into std out. So let's go ahead and run webminer.py and let's give it an input uh, securitytube.net Okay, so as we can see the HTML code of securitytube.net's index page has been dumped onto std out. Uh, let's actually you pipe it to less and you know actually see the entire page. Okay, so as we can see the entire HTML page has been fetched by uh, URL lib and it's outputted to the std out. Let's go back. Uh, now the second thing we have to do is once the HTML page is available locally we need to go ahead and parse the HTML page. Now in order to parse the HTML page we need to feed the HTML page to a parser and basically we can do this in two ways. First is either using a DOM parser or secondly a stream parser. In this example we will use a DOM parser. However it is important to understand the difference between a DOM and a stream parser. So what a DOM parser does is that once you feed it the HTML page it will go ahead and create the HTML DOM structure in memory. Once that structure is created, you can call various methods of the HTML DOM parser in order to get data out of that DOM tree. A stream parser on the contrary just traverses the entire HTML page as a stream and as and when it is going to hit various HTML tags such as the A tag or the P tag, it will go ahead and call callback functions through which a programmer can do various things. So in this example, we will be using the DOM parser and beautiful soup DOM parser in particular. So let's go ahead, import the beautiful soup parser and then uh, let's feed the HTML page into the beautiful soup parser. And what we get is actually an HTML DOM. Okay, HTML page. Okay. Now, once this is done, what we will do is we will try to print the title of the page. So now we have the HTML DOM created by Beautiful Soup, and very simply we can access the title of the page we just fetched by going and just simply printing HTML DOM dot title dot string. 
I would encourage you to actually look up the beautiful soup documentation. I've kept a link in the summary and uh, you know know about more advanced features. Okay, so let's go ahead remove the pipe and less and enter. Great. So here it is. So as we can see that the HTML Tom parser has allowed us to selectively print the title of the page. Right. So let's go back to our code and now let's try and print all the links in that HTML page. So printing the links is actually a you know very good exercise in web crawling simply because any web crawler would follow all the links both inbound as well as outbound in a given HTML page. So in order to do that, uh, let's actually go ahead and use another interesting method of beautiful soup, which is the find all method. So let's go ahead, tell the find all method that we need to find all the A tags, which have a valid href attribute. The reason for this actually is that any given link is actually nothing but an A tag with the link URL being nothing but the href attribute. Okay, so this returns us a list of all links on the page and stores it in all links. And from that, let's go ahead and print the individual links. So let's print link and then the attribute of that link, which is href. Let's quit our program and let's run it again. So now as we can see all the links both relative and absolute have been printed. So these are the relative links and the one here let's say feed burner is the absolute link. Right so uh, you know interestingly a page will contain both relative and absolute relative generally is for the same website and absolute is for external websites. So as we've seen that we were able to print all the links on the given page. Now let's try to do something else which is print all the comments which have been included with the HTML code. In general comments are very interesting simply because sometimes web designers uh, leave a lot of interesting information such as URLs to CMSs or even sometimes even usernames and passwords because while they're collaborating and creating the website it's just easy to comment the code so that somebody else can take a look at it and just get started. So in order to print all the comments, we import the comment module from comment class from beautiful soup and then tell it to actually find all the comments. We do this by defining a Lambda function, uh, which is actually going to make sure that all the text, which are comments are actually assigned to the all comments list would encourage you also to have go through a quick primer of uh, Python. It's a very friendly language, very high level language, allows you to code POCs very fast. Uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and print each comment in the all comments list. Let's go ahead, print each comment as we traverse the list. Okay, let's quit the program and run this. Okay, I think before we do that, let's go ahead and uncomment the link printing because or else it's going to be a lot of uh, things on the screen it will not allow us to just concentrate on the printing of comments. Let's run it. And what we see now is that just the comments which are there in the HTML page have been printed. So Google CSE code begins code and start counter code starts ends. So these are the comments which are there in the index page of securitytube.net. So let's now go back to our code. And as a third example, what we will do now is leave it as an exercise to the user <laughs> to dump all the text as well as individual tags. Uh, but before I actually sign off, let me run you through the code once again to touch upon some of the important parts. The first is that we need to 
uh, get together a HTML page fetching component which is actually the real crawler and that is done through URL lib once the page is fetched we need to go ahead and use a parser such as beautiful soup which is a DOM parser in this case uh, to actually construct the DOM once the DOM is constructed we can go ahead access the DOM elements or even search and sort uh, by using the find all method of beautiful soup and then print all of that onto the screen so I would actually encourage you to download this piece of code try it out on your own and even try to build a more complex module I've kept the code as minimal as possible so that you know it's very easy for me to convey across uh, the key points which one needs to understand in order to create a web crawler the next logical step is to take all of this data uh, through the crawler and then push it onto a database on which then you can run various analysis uh, engines and algorithms. Well, that's all for this video. Please leave your comment behind in the comment section below. Thank you.